One of the things I really love is sketchbook art. And by that, I mean art that isn't just a bunch of drawings in a sketchbook, but it's pages that are composed with beautiful watercolors and pencil drawings and all kinds of things that are just laid out and organized to just tell a story. It can be so beautiful, so rich. And because I'm so fascinated by this art form, I've been collecting artists for many, many years, and I want to share with you some of my favorites. And today I want to interview my friend Janice McCarty, who is an incredible sketchbook artist and works in many different forms. She does painting and gouache and draws people and does lettering and illustrates recipes. And you'll die when you see all the stuff that she does. It's really amazing. And she works here at Sketchbook School, so I can chat with her or watch her or learn from her whenever I want to, as can all the other folks who are taking classes here at Sketchbook School. So without further ado, let's jump in, talk to Janice, and find out how do you start making really beautiful sketchbook art, and what is it exactly? Hi, Janice. Hi, Danny. Good so, to see good. you. So, so thanks for joining me today. I want to talk to you about, about sketchbooks and sketchbook art. Would you... You're a, basically a sketchbook artist, would you say? Yes, yes, I would say that. Not always, I haven't always been, but I am now. So what is it about sketchbook art that you like? I think I like it because it's immediate and I can pick it up anytime. Uh, I had, um, I was a high school art teacher for a long time and I would come home exhausted and I wanted to do art and I didn't feel like getting out the oil paints or the big canvases or that was, I just saved that for, summers or for holidays but um i discovered sketchbook school and i loved the, the fact that that i was being encouraged to sketch every day and i found it very easy to sit down at my art table in the evening and sketch for what, I, what was going to be 15 minutes and i sketched for hours it didn't matter if i was um uh, producing uh something that somebody else would like it was for me it was personal and I just fell in love with working in my sketchbook every day. So what, what, what does art mean to you? It's obviously been part of your life for a long time. What's its purpose in your life? Oh, well, I don't ever remember not wanting to be an artist, not loving art. That, that's a hard question to answer because I can't even imagine life without art. I was fortunate enough to have people in my life who encouraged me to do that. No one ever discouraged me and said that's a waste of time. Uh, my mother... Uh, supplied me with, with what, what I needed to make art when she could. We didn't always have a lot of money, but uh, she would buy me, uh, you know, art supplies. I had friends who would buy me art supplies for my birthday and uh, everyone always wanted to see my artwork. So it was, it was always a part of who I am. Um, I, I can't even describe what it means because it's just like my arm or my leg. It's just in my heart and soul. Yeah, I know that feeling. What about being a teacher, being an art teacher? Why is that where you have focused your your energy, both when you were teaching younger people and now you're teaching adults? I have. It's really funny when I went to I went to the University of Memphis, called Memphis State at that time, and uh, I was an art major. And I had, you know, as a young eighteen year old, you have these ambitions of I was going to be an interior designer, or I was going to do, be something uh, cool and have a cool apartment. And uh, but I always, when I was in college, I always, even when I was in, in school, uh, elementary and in high school, I always imagined myself standing in front of a classroom teaching. And so after two years of um, college, I just knew that's what I was supposed to do. I would be in a class with uh, you know, the art professors and I would think to myself, I think I would have taught that another way. I think if it were me, I would have said this to that person. Or I, and so I knew that I was supposed to be a teacher. And I have to say that I love teaching every bit as much as I love uh, making art. And I think the main reason is because I love to see somebody's eyes light up when they, when they say, you know, I've got it. And that student who thought they couldn't do it and they could. I, I, I had this student one time who came to me after her freshman year of art in high school and said, I'm not very good, Miss McCarty, but I want to take art too. I love art so much. 
and she wasn't as good as as good as some of the other students, but she had this fantastic work ethic. And she sat in my room every year with her earplugs in, ear, ear, earbuds in, working as hard as she could. And she made a five on her AP portfolio, which is the top score. And she got a, an art scholarship to college. And uh, that's what she majored in in college. That's what I loved. I loved being able to tell people Yes, you can do art and you can do it for the rest of your life if you want to. Now, what about with adults? Because you're talking to people who, you know, didn't, you know, probably gave up art at some point, right? They gave up and they um, had other reasons to, you know, other things they had to do in their lives. Um, what is different about teaching somebody who uh, stepped away from it and is now coming back to art? What's, what's the difference in how you teach them and how they respond and how they can learn. I found that most of them need a lot of encouragement somewhere along the line. Somebody said, you can't, you shouldn't, you won't. And, uh, and it's not real hard to help them overcome that. You know, that's the thing that I love about uh, sketchbook school is that there is so much encouragement all the way around from the top to the bottom everybody is encouraging everybody and we stress that mistakes are a part of uh, making art and it's an important part of making art we uh, uh, stress wonkiness and uh learning from our mistakes and and giving up perfectionism you know trying not to be perfect that it's the journey it's not the destination it's the um it's the, just the process itself is uh fulfilling it's what you're it's something that your soul needs and uh, i think that's what you do you help them see that all art there's no bad art there's no bad art it's your art and uh and art's really not that difficult you know when you teach something the correct way you just are teaching people to see in a different way it's not magic fingers it's not magic in your brain it's just learning to see and know what you're looking for it's as simple as that and uh, i think through i think what we do around here is we we make it simple for them we, we help them see how really simple this is and that is an extension of themselves selves and they can express themselves however they want I like that idea. You put it so succinctly. Art just isn't that hard. I mean, it's. I mean, kids do it. It's not that hard. We. It's kind of like this thing that we have this natural ability to do, and then we've piled on all kinds of reasons to not do it that have kind of crushed, crushed it down. But you yeah. can you can pull those things off, and you can make it fun again. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one of the things that that I love about having you in our community is is first of all you you understand our community really well but also the range of different things that you're teaching. What are, what are the different classes that you teach uh, as part of Spark right now? Well, I'm teaching watercolor. That was the first class I think that I taught. And I, I'm teaching, that alternates with gouache. Gouache is a form of watercolor, but it's a completely different medium that that is, uh, the techniques and the concepts are different. And I teach uh, drawing fundamentals. Um, just basic things, how to look, how to see, what are we looking for? You know, pretty soon we're going to be drawing bicycles in class and bicycles are complicated and, and hard to draw, but they're really not. You learn a few basic things about a bicycle and you can draw any bicycle. And that's, that's a drawing class. And then uh, I tr teach one called word art where we, today word art is so trendy and uh, the, the text, the letters, the words have all become an element of art. And sometimes they're the focal point of the artwork and uh, or sometimes they're the texture or sometimes they're the color or the shapes and we there's so many things you can do with words just like there's so many things you can do with a circle or a square or green or yellow or blue and then i also lead a group called spiritual sketchbook where we um, really uh, examine ourselves within we think about what's going on inside of here that not everybody knows about not that we're trying to divulge any deep dark secrets but we're trying to express those emotions and feelings about ourselves and our values and our belief system and um, use that in our artwork maybe as symbols or colors we journal with it we we paint we draw we sketch we do abstracts sometimes um, to express our spiritualism yeah that's a lot you teach a lot of stuff. 
Um, so let, I want to talk a bit about them individually. So the watercolor class you teach is called Watercolor Wednesday, and it is generally 90 minutes long. It's every Wednesday. And ha what is your approach to teaching that? Because you've been teaching it now for, I don't know, about a year and a half, two years, it feels like. And yet you come up with something new to teach every week, different aspects of watercolor. What is the, the process of teaching that class? I've, I've been a watercolorist for 50 years. And over the years, I've found that people are afraid of watercolor. They have tried watercolor before and they're afraid of it. They're, uh, they're unsuccessful with it. The, it all runs together or their colors are too pale. And, and because I'm a watercolorist and I've taught it so much, I know what people need to overcome to be a watercolorist. And that's why I love to teach it because once again, it's really pretty simple. You know, you how to mix your paints and how, what kind of supply. Sometimes you, you just bought a, a kid set of watercolor and expected it to do what um, Winslow Homer did or, you know, <laughs> some great artist did with it. But uh, so having the right supplies and having the right amount of water and practice, practice and play with the paint. Uh, you know, I think every teacher in, um, sketchbook school always says play with this you know play with your art supplies play with this and that's you know that's one of the best teachers it's just knowing what your medium is going to do when you get ready to paint a picture and i and i try to take people uh over the line so that they're no longer afraid of watercolor but can embrace it and embrace its quirkiness embrace the fact that the colors run together make them run together sometimes uh, don't be afraid of the mistakes there are lots of ways to correct it and sometimes it's better if it's left uncorrected it's just different from all of the other mediums it's just completely different it doesn't stay put it has a mind of its own it's like that third child you have that's just crazy and you just have to embrace who who that child is and try to lead them in the right direction if you can i agree i think it's it is it is organic it is alive it reacts differently over time. You put color down and then, you know, it changes as, and then you put other colors on top of it. Other more opaque media, oil painting, gouache, acrylic, it's kind of more like you put it there and there it is. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you can control it much more. Watercolor, the fact that it's uncontrollable is both a positive and a negative. For I think for a lot of people starting it, it feels like, oh, this is completely wild. I don't even know what to do with it. Um, but I think it also is like a collaborator with you and it introduces new mm -hmm. elements that you maybe didn't anticipate. And that's what makes it so great, particularly for, for landscapes, for skies, for things like that, but also for, for portraits and for still lives. And this really, you can do everything with watercolor. Um, it's also a great medium for sketchbooks too, because it's so portable. That's what I love about it. You can take it anywhere. You can get a little set, stick it in your pocket, your purse, your bag, and uh, you don't have to have a lot of other stuff uh, with it. It's just real easy to take wherever you go. Yeah, and I think the thing that, that beginners struggle with is getting clean, bright colors, getting things that are controlled. And I think you, know, you, can, you can so easily overwork watercolor and it can become muddy or murky or flat. And, um, and I see the watercolors that are coming out of your class because people share them in the schoolyard. And I always think like, they, they did this just yesterday? Or, I mean, it's really, it's remarkable what people are learning from you and how they're making progress. And I think also what I, what I love about it is people can start taking this class kind of at any point. It's not like you have to, you know, have begun at the beginning of the semester. Every class is introductory in a sense, but is also can also build on what you've done before. That must be a struggle to mm -hmm. manage that kind of a thing, that process. It is sometimes, but I try to rem remember as I'm teaching that some things that I take for granted about watercolor and, and know that some of these people already know, I repeat things about color mixing, about the color wheel, and about how uh, I try to show how much water I'm putting in the paint each time. I don't always do that, but I try to explain how I control the water going into the paint. Those are basic things that can mess your painting up real quick if you don't do it correctly. So I try to remember those basic things. And, um, and, and I, you know, I, I, t I go along and teach and then I go back and do some something from the beginning and uh, do it again. And uh, it's, it's, you know, beginning lessons are good for everybody and it's good for me as well, <laughs> you know, to practice yeah. those uh, concepts. Which brings me to drawing fundamentals because I think that that 
fundamentals are something that we s sort of assume that you need as the as the as a beginner as an introdu as an introduction but i think fundamentals are things that all artists come back to over and over again right we continue to to practice these same things so what is the, what is the approach that you have towards teaching fundamentals? And and by the way, we call it fundamentals, um, and and try to avoid what can be really tedious. I mean, a lot of introductory drawing stuff is just so boring because you're drawing cones or mm -hmm. you know cubes and things like that. How do you keep it fun, and and how do you sort of bring people along? You know, we just have a, a, an hour drawing class and we uh, so we have to get into the meat of the subject right away. But I teach those same concepts, those same shading concepts. And the thing that I do a lot in that class is I demonstrate and I want them to hear what my uh, artist voice is saying in my head, how I'm comparing as I go along. This line is longer than, this line is running into the side of this about halfway up. Uh, this line is not as wide as that line. It's all about comparisons. And when you, I think when you hear that art talk in someone else's head, you learn uh, what you're looking for. And I also will take whatever we're doing, the photograph we're working from, whatever, and I'll say, this is what you need to look for in this photograph. You need to see that uh, this is the shape of this. And notice the shadows in there. This shadow has a shape and it's darker on the inside and it's lighter as it goes out. I just, I try to point out those things because I think in the beginning, you don't even know what you're looking for. But as soon as someone tells you, this is what you need to look for. This is what you need to notice. Uh, the more you do that, the more you develop your drawing skills. And Danny, I know that you probably do this too. When I'm out driving on the street or I'm walking down the street, I'm noticing the shapes of shadows and I'm noticing uh, how cool that uh, light pole is up at the top. And those are things that you start to do when you're an artist. You start looking for subjects and you start analyzing everything that you see because you're you're used to doing that uh, daily in your in your art practice. I think so much of learning to make art, and it's true of learning a sport, learning to play the piano, learning a lot of the other things, is kind of shifting your brain and your body into this mode that um, increasingly becomes hardwired into you. That at first you have to think about every aspect of it, but then after a while, particularly through repetition, these things become instinctive. So you can make great progress pretty quickly because suddenly you start to say oh i had no idea that this is this is even the way to do it i was struggling with the wrong way of doing it trying to force it into position but actually a lot of it becomes about learning these basic skills and then integrating them really into quite literally the your nervous system and the, the neurology of your brain you're creating mm -hmm. synapses you're doing things that really are rewiring you and that that applies to when you're making art, but also, as you say, it applies to just your everyday life. You walk around, you're more in tune, more sensitized to your life, to, to the beauty all around you. And if you've been drawing portraits, you look at somebody and say, look at the shape of those eyebrows. Well, that one eyebrow on the left is really going wild over there. <laughs> I'm not talking about yours, but you start noticing things like that. And you're thinking, if I drew the bottom of that nose, I would do that. Sometimes you don't even hear people because you're so busy drawing them. It's like anything. If you, if you are learning to play a musical instrument, you practice, 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 practice. So that's what we do with art too. And we, so many of us talk about we're in a meeting and we're doodling, we're drawing, you know, somebody's shoe next to us or we're drawing the speaker or we're drawing, you know, the plant that's in the corner and that's that's what our mind wants to do we, we see things we want to draw it yeah and i think a key to the way that you teach and a lot of what we talk about at sketchbook school is practice seems tedious you know you imagine like shading exercises if you're playing the piano having to play the scales over and over again but there's a way of learning fundamentals and from the very beginning having fun doing it and making art that actually makes some sense. It isn't just academic exercises, but it's like, oh, you're drawing something that has some meaning to you. Even if you're just drawing your coffee cup, you know, mm -hmm. you might remember where you bought that coffee cup, or you might think about why that's your favorite coffee cup as you're drawing it. So you can have an emotional connection to the art that you're making, which I think is a key part of making art. It's not just a 
technical exercise. It is a way of being. And that is something that all too often, I think, isn't emphasized in teaching art. Um, you know, because there's there's this, this more generic academic way of doing it. And I think mm -hmm. uh, what we try to do um, is, to, is to talk about this as a way of life. And a way of life right. is not just about building blocks. Or if it is about building blocks, it's about fun building blocks. Yeah. Right. I love it when somebody posts in the schoolyard a drawing they did at the emergency room or the doctor's office. They had to wait for an hour and they've drawn this great spread across their uh, sketchbook. And I think, how cool is that? They weren't bored. They weren't forced to read those magazines that were in the doctor's office. They just, they just created something in their sketchbook because they take that sketchbook with them all the time. Absolutely. We spend a lot of time looking at our phones. Um, reading, uh, absorbing content, creativity that other people have put out there. And uh, Sketchbook allows you, you know, to just to make, to turn this into a making opportunity rather than just a, just a taking thing. Um, great. And then word art, uh, you talked a little bit about word art. I think the idea is really to take letters and to make them express more than the word itself right tell tell, tell me a bit about what word art is exactly well we do, we do lots of different things uh with it uh we're using art as elements of design we use them as patterns and colors when i was in college i took a semester of calligraphy we had those slanted pens and we had paper with the slanted lines and we practiced it was cool it was great looking we were proud of ourselves when we did it but now people computers can do that. Uh, we can make our own fonts. We can use our handwriting uh, and turn it into art. We can make our handwriting be shading on the side of the face. We can make the background words that you have to really look at to read, but you find out that they're meaningful and go with, a, with the, the drawing that's on the paper as well. Uh, sometimes you look at a piece of artwork and you don't even realize that the words and letters are there, but they're, they're creating textures or patterns or shadows. Uh, so there's so many things that we can do with, just like you can do hatching and cross hatching, uh, you can use uh, words to do so many things in art that no one ever thought about before. I think it's 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 really exciting. There's it's endless what you can do with words. They're not just it's not just for reading, and it's, it's it has kind of a double purpose in the artwork. It's the elements of the design and creating the colors, the textures and the patterns, but it also has a message in it sometimes. Great. Well, I think, look, I th I'm sure that everybody watching this has gotten the sense already from you, how much you care about art, how much you care about teaching art, but also how you make it fun, how you make it practical, how you understand really what people are going through and the struggles that they have. And those are all parts of, of you know, being empathetic and being a great teacher, I think. So, Thanks very much for everything that you do. I think that there's so many people who are making art that they're excited and proud of now, thanks to you. You've had just a huge impact on our community. And it's really, Thank you. it's been great to have you as part of our Spark team in particular. Thank you. I, I love it. You know that I love it myself. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. Well, if you'd like to learn more from Janice, she's teaching virtually every day in our Spark program which is a membership program here at Sketchbook School. And you can take classes from her and lots of other amazing artists every day. We have 20 hours or more of different kinds of classes in lettering and drawing and painting and all kinds of stuff each week. So uh, if you'd like to find out more about it, if you'd like to check it out yourself, maybe try a, a trial, free trial sample, just come to sketchbookschool.com and sign up. And we'll see you and Janice in class real soon. Thanks a lot. It's been fun hanging out with you and Janice. Bye-bye.